All right, good evening. The time being 7 p.m. on November 18th, 2019. A quorum of the planning board being present. Call this meeting to order. Uh, before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items. One, uh, agenda item D this evening, which is 1037 North Street, 1547 North Street at all. Um, that applicant has requested that this be continued to our 1216 meeting. So if anyone's here for that, it will not be discussed this evening. Uh, you don't need to hang around. Nothing will be decided or discussed. Um, then the other housekeeping item is this. Uh, I know there's probably several people in the audience tonight that are here for the elementary school discussion, and that's fine. Obviously, you know, everyone is welcome to be here. But I do want people to understand this is a planning board meeting. We're not here. We will not relitigate whether the school should or should not have passed. We are not here to litigate whether or not the field should have been connected to the, st the school vote, uh, how much it costs, or anything like that. Those meetings have either already been held or they should be dealt with elsewhere. This is planning board, and we're going to deal with the zoning-related items, the items that we get discussed tonight, that get discussed tonight. We're not going to have people going off on a tangent at the podium about items that we don't deal with. Um, and don't have any control over anyway. <clears throat> this isn't the place for it, and we won't have that discussion here tonight. Okay? So, uh, the only other one, and I, it's really unfortunate that I even have to say this, I guess, but uh, we will not have people yelling out from the audience when anyone's talking. We will also, as someone has done recently in one of our meetings, we will also not have people flipping the bird off to the board from the audience. I'm sure no one here needs to have that said to them, but since someone did actually do that in a meeting recently, I figure I should let people know that that will not be tolerated. All right? Okay, so with that, we will get going. Uh, first item on the agenda, agenda item A, approval of minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the minutes from October 21st, which is a regular planning board meeting. Okay. Does anybody have any um, issue with any of the four? We just take them all at once and just get, you know, take them all at once if that's all right. I'll just make a note, Mr. Chairman, that the second board meeting of the 30th and the 12th were a joint meeting of the Planning Board and Zoning Bylaw Committee, so okay. that's all. All right, so then we're going to take a motion to approve the October 21st, October 30th, November 4th, and November 12th uh, meeting minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Should be an individual motion on each set of minutes. Have we taken minutes all together before? Yeah, not thinking about it. I should really do it. Okay, do you want me to do them each one, one at a time? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that will change the first motion to the October 21st meeting only. Second. All right, so uh, we'll take the vote again. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. As to the October 30th minutes, I have a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes of October 30th. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. Uh, as to the November 4th, 2019 minutes, do I have a motion? Motion to approve the uh, November 4th meeting, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. And as to the November 12th, 2019 minutes, do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the November 12th, Mr. Chairman. All right, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Takes care of minutes. Moving on to agenda item B, committee reports and administrative actions. Do any of the members have any committee reports they'd like to make at this time? No. All set, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fowler, you're all set? Yep. All right. The only comment I'll make, it's not so much for our benefit because we were there, but the planning board has gone to a couple of joint meetings with the bylaw subcommittee. Uh, to go over the bylaws, uh, the bylaw draft um, that seems to be proceeding well and will hopefully be brought out for public meetings soon. Uh, I don't have any dates, but just to let everyone know that's sort of where the process has been recently. Uh, other than that, takes care of committee reports. Moving on to 395 Wuben Street, uh, CubeSmart bond release request. All right. Um, it's my understanding that there's nobody here for this, correct? Okay. My understanding, there are still outstanding items for this, uh, so I would suggest that we do not release this bond at this time. Yeah. Is that all right with everybody else? Lay it on the table. Yeah. Motion to understand? lay on the table. All right. All right. So I have a motion to lay this one on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carries. 
Uh, moving on to 743 Main Street, Tewksbury Village bond release request. Um, the applicant has actually asked for us to push this off to uh, our next meeting. So if no one has any objection to that, we will uh, we'll lay this one on the table as well. No motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Motion second. made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. And agenda item B4, which is 1390 Main Street on release requests. Nobody here for that either? Nope. Uh, same as the other two, my understanding is that there are outstanding issues still on this, so if the members have no objection. Motion to lay in the table. All right, motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. All right, that takes care of the bonds. All right, that brings us to agenda item B5, modi modification of planning board application and fees. B5, there it is. All right, I don't know if the members have had an opportunity to take a look at this. What's up, Mr. Fowler? Mr. Fowler? To be honest with you, I spent some time with it, but not enough to, real, to uh, offer a vote on this because uh, I hadn't known that this was happening. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Delaney? I don't know. I have no idea at this point if it's acceptable or not. You know, the fees, I... We have never discussed it before. Okay. Uh, Mr. Vitalia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did take a look at these fees. Um, I guess like, I have a couple of questions that I'd like to present to, um, to uh, the uh, town planner who's not here tonight, but I was wondering where these fees are in, in comparison to adjacent towns or towns in the Merrimack Valley. If they have a similar, similar fee structure, uh, what I don't want to do is to um, uh, be overbearing to people coming in to do permits and make it unbearable to, on their side uh, for potential business coming in. And uh, just as long as they're comparable to other towns and not uh, out of sight as far as what they're looking for fees for those, uh, and I wouldn't have a problem, but um, you know, I'd like to have us take a look at other towns in the area to uh, review their fees and special permit fees, extension fees, uh, before I vote on this as well. So. Uh, all right, so, I mean, I'm not going to say anything really much different than the rest of the members. You know, obviously, uh, to be able to go over a few of these with the town planner would, would probably be advisable. Uh, so hopefully we can do that at our next meeting, and that'll be, give them enough time to incorporate these for the new year if we do that at the next meeting. So um, I guess we will table this one f until our next meeting as well. we we'll to make a motion for that, Mr. Collins? So moved. A motion made. Second. A second. Motion made and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. All right, that brings us to agenda item B6, one Mountjoy Drive, A&R. Mr. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, for the record, Dick Chuko uh, representing the George Sinus Trust. If you recall, we were in a few weeks ago where we subdivided uh, the existing house off onto a four acre lot. Uh, they now want to sell that home with the adjacent property, so they uh, have we split it into three one acre lots. All of the lots have the required frontage, the required area, and they meet the uh, perimeter. Uh, ratio uh, that's set in the zoning bylaw. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right. Mr. Vitalia? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just so for the record, Mr. Cuco, all three lots will be conforming right, right when this A&R plan gets approved, right? So Correct. they all have the frontage that's required. Yeah. The, and three, can... the, three, the three, three criteria are frontage area on an existing, actually for on an existing road. Yeah and the perimeter ratio, which right. is going to be going away, hopefully, in the, uh, with the new bylaw. Yeah. <laughs> I did see that in the plan. I just wanted to put it for the record, put it up uh, for us on our record. So with that, I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Delaney? Yeah, they're all conforming. I don't have a problem with it mm -hmm. at all. Mr. Fox, all set. Uh, the chair is fine as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what is the pleasure of the board? 
Motion to uh, endorse. endorse the plan. All right, we have a motion to endorse the A&R plan. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion carries. Thank you, you very much. We have up here, right? Yeah. You yeah. No, Anna. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the one up here. She okay. wants to, uh, Anna always likes to make a copy with the signatures on it. Then she calls me when it's ready and we'll pick it up. So thank yeah. you. All right. Moving on to agenda item C, 135 Pleasant Street Elementary School, Town of Tewksbury. Special sorry, site plan special permit. Uh, do we have a motion to waive the public reading? So move, we'll move. Mr. Chairman. All right, we have a motion made, seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. Whoever's here for this, come on up. Gentlemen, we just have a, uh, a reminder request from the audience that when you're speaking, just make sure you're speaking into the mic, so because you're facing us and the folks in the audience will have a harder time hearing you if uh, you don't speak into the microphones. <clears throat> Feel free to speak up too. We won't think you're yelling at us. That way, everybody can hear. That's you. So should we make tonight? I don't know my name. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, Peter Collins, owners, owners, project manager for, for the company CBRE Heary, on behalf of the uh, the building committee, submitting an application for the planning board for the elementary school project at 135. Um, Pleasant Street. With me tonight is the design team members. To my right, I'll... excuse me. My name is Bill Marr with uh, Niche Engineering. We're the civil consultant. Uh, Bill Beatrice with uh, Flansburg Architects, uh, project architect. Sam Basta, landscape architect with Crosby, Sussinger, Small. All right, the floor is yours, gentlemen. Thank you very much. So at this point, um, as we've submitted on the application and the documentation, I'm going to essentially turn it over to uh, the design team, mostly Bill, Bill Beatrice from Plantsburg, and he'll take it from here. So uh, when I was here uh, a couple of weeks ago for the concept review, I ran through the building, the amenities, the spaces inside the building. Uh, given where we are now at this meeting, I think it's probably uh, in the best interest of everybody's time is to start with a general overview of the site plan. And then I'd like to turn it over to Bill Marr to talk about uh, specifics in terms of storm water management and any other questions you may have, if that's okay, unless someone wants me to go oh, into fine. the building. So Sam, maybe if you wanna walk us through the uh, site plan up there, that's where we can start. This is on? Yep. yep. Great. Uh, so in the Northeast, Portion of the site will be the new school building. Uh, adjacent to that will be a new play area sized to maximize capacity so that we can get as many kids playing on it as possible. Uh, to the northwest of the site will be the new athletic fields, associated bleachers. Uh, and then ringing the site is a one way loop road. Uh, you'll enter uh, on this plan sort of in the southern curb cut, uh, proceed around, parent drop off will proceed around the loop and they'll drop off uh, in a shared drop off area between the two schools, sort of in this quad area. Um, you can also pull off in the satellite parking uh, and a potential grass field here so that uh, you can easily access the field if you're going to watch a football game or something like that. Uh, as buses enter, they'll, they'll turn a little bit harder and head into the bus loop, size for 16 buses. Again, that will be a shared drop off area for both schools. Uh, it's an existing rural pool on site that will be remain and be protected. Uh, I think that's about it. In concept, maybe Bill, you might want to walk us through the uh, technical aspects of the site. Sure, uh, <clears throat> Jimmy. The the site has um, wetlands, um, uh, a floodplain area, and a, a vernal pool. Uh, we recently have submitted. Um, a ANRAD, an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation to the Conservation Commission. We received a, um, an ORAD, an order of resource area delineation um, earlier this month, but it has been recorded at the Registry of Deeds. And we are in the midst now of preparing our documents for a notice of intent filing with the uh, Conservation Commission. We will require the filing of a NIPTES permit, which is a 
National Pollution Discharge Elimination System because we are disturbing more than one acre of land on the site here. That will be you know, something that the contractor will apply for um, once he has been selected, uh, along with all of his uh, sub subcontractors, uh, specifically the um, utility contractors and the, and the site contractor them, themselves. Um, I'd like to go over the uh, utilities. Um, Currently, right now, the site has approximately 135 parking spaces um, and eight handicap accessible spaces. Um, as part of this project, we propose to um, increase the number of spaces as shown on the plan here um, to 365 parking spaces. I'm sorry, 368, and 18 of those will be accessible parking. Um, at scattered locations throughout the area for accessibility to the um, new football field and to, to both um, buildings, and as, as well as to the satellite field um, at the southwest corner of the uh, site. <clears throat> My apologies, Mr. Hopkins. So, starting off at uh, Pleasant Street, we have an existing uh, water line service uh, that feeds the existing uh, Barnes um, Ryan School. And at the request of the water department, because they have a, a little difficulty in um, shutting down the, the line, um, we are installing a three gate valve system out on uh, Pleasant Street just for easier um, access to the, uh, to the water line. Chairman? Yes, sir. If they need a second easel, there's one right there. Do you guys want that? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Thank you. Oh, we'll oh. loan those out, too. Thank you. You see the easel, you should be all right, though. At the southwest corner of the Ryan School, where the existing water line ends um, with a water line connection for domestic water uh, service and for fire protection to the to Ryan School, we're picking up from there and we are running a, a loop system out to Monroe Circle that will help um, that we will also feed off of the new building for its fire and domestic water services. It will also help improve water quality uh, in the area and in, in the slope because you will have continuous water um, running through the site and um, we will also help to increase uh, the pressure that feeds out to um, Monroe Circle. Um, at the um, bottom of the, the field, the new athletic field, we have a new concession stand um, slash field house. Um, and we are also feeding that with uh, a fire and domestic water services for the um, for that building. At that location, we pick up our sewer, where we are collecting uh, sewer flows from 
a little bit of bathrooms in front of the concession area here where running it northward out towards Monroe Circle where we need to pick up where we will pick up um, sewer flows coming from the, the building through a uh, grease trap, which is basically the um, kitchen waste line. Um, it's a dedicated line that's strictly from the, the kitchen portion of the um, cafeteria. And then we are connecting out to the uh, existing sewer line in uh, Monroe Circle. And I know that a big topic of concern you know, has been the, the storm drainage. You know, as, as we have to file a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission, we are required under the DP stormwater management guidelines to um, offset any increase in stormwater um, you know, activity. You know, we cannot um, discharge any more water from the site than the current goes there now um, you know, based on improved site conditions. So, because of that, we have a series of subsurface um, detention systems um, on, on the site and throughout the site. Um, we have about eight to 10 of them, um, you know, scattered about to collect the stormwater runoff from the, the parking lots, from the building roofs, from walkways and you know, so forth. And um, um, discharge it into these systems. Now, less than two weeks ago, we completed some on-site uh, test pits. We had met with the town engineer back in October, who had requested that they wanted to be a part of the test pits that um, we were digging out there, and we needed to do a, at least a, one test pit in each location where we had a, a proposed system. So we did that over a um, two-day period, um, like I said. The second day was completed um, less than two weeks ago. The, the first uh, day of soil testing was completed almost three weeks ago. So, you know, based on the soil material that we encountered, which was um, sand, um, you know, about, and it varied anywhere from a, a fine um, sand to a medium to, to coarse sand, very granular, and so forth, which gives um, um, the stormwater a uh, location for it to percolate through and decrease the amount of runoff um, you know, that is going on um, you know, at this time to either any you know, neighbors or, or to the river, or I'm um, sorry, to, to the brook. So, <clears throat> and as um, you know, Sam mentioned, we have a, um, a vernal pool located in the, in the middle of the site. Um, you know, we intend to um, maintain that um, as is, and if we also plan to have that as a teaching tool for some sort of um, platform, um, you know, maybe some sort of um, um, board, you know, that just describes the, the vernal pool, you know, what they do, um, the um, specimens, you know, that were found um, in, the, in this vernal pool, just as a, a learning tool for the, the students, you know, at this location. Now, all of the uh, recharge systems, the subsurface infiltration systems, they consist of um, chambers. Uh, we typically use um, a, a storm tech um, style chambers, they're a plastic chamber. They hold a tremendous amount of water um, in there. And as I mentioned before, we are required to offset the um, uh, pre construction um, runoff values that leave the site. <coughs> And we are doing this for the two 10 and 100 year storm events um, in compliance with the uh, DEP stormwater management guidelines. We have um, a, a couple of discharges that um, reach out um, to the western side of the property out near the uh, edge of the wetlands, where we'll have uh, you know, some um, riprap um, you know, to, to help. Uh, reduce any um, um, you know, spoils and uh, erosion as uh, the water dissipates into that um, into the areas there. Um, 
Over in the, the satellites uh, ball fields here, we have a um, detention basin because of the um, landscape of the um, finished grade out there at this time. And we're, we're looking to build uh, a basin that will have an overflow into the uh, wetlands on the southwestern side of the property. At this location is the proposed school, and you can see the, the, the massive system that we have um, you know, here to um, take the, the roof runoff from the building as well as from the, the driveway and the, and the parking lots in this area and recharge that groundwater. And you know, in, in uh, good housekeeping and in, with a uh, good standard engineering practice, we have a full system where if, if the um, uh, you know, chambers you know, fill up you know, too much, um, you know, say there's a back-to-back -back heavy storms and things of that nature, that we have an old flow that will uh, go out to the, um, uh, to the wetland area. Well, they, they, they'll discharge towards the wetlands, but we're, we're not doing any work in, in the wetlands. Out in front of the site, as Sam mentioned earlier, we have a, a bus loop um, area for all the stacking of buses, and we have an interior parking area for, for the Ryan School and for um, you know, staff. And again, we're collecting the stormwater runoff from these areas, um, low points with catch basins, that are deep sump pointed catch basins with uh, water quality units and with uh, you know, drain manholes uh, you know, to um, direct that stormwater runoff into these chamber units or into the system and then um, eventually out towards the, uh, the wetlands. know what page you're on oh sure I'm, we I'm have sorry. the same maps here C C 4.04 okay thank you my, my apologies on, on the loop road around the site um, in the vicinity of the proposed concession slash field house uh, building um, we are um, there's currently a, a dirt path a dirt road up to that um, area to the southwest of the site that we were putting in the new parking lot and the um, satellite field. And it's very narrow, and because of its uh, constraints and um, because of the expected um, travel, you know, via car and by pedestrians, we are widening that um, mop there. There's currently two 12-inch culvert pipes, and so we're looking to put in a box culvert um, to span across those um, the area here where the dirt path is so that we can gain access uh, to that upper um, highland area. Um, I, th I think that's about it um, for, for now. Right. Anything else there? Uh, no, I think that, I think that Pretty much hit it. We covered utilities, uh, parking, stormwater management, um, general overview of the site. Um, Would you guys want to, um, before I bring it up to here, you, we have the, the additional items listed on here. Do you have anything you want to discuss on um, the recently submitted the turning radius plan, the site signage plan, or the existing conditions plans? They were all recently submitted. Uh, as requested, um, did, you, did you, we want to go through them? Did you want us to? Do you have anything you want to point out on them, or are you just fine with them? I think we're just fine. I mean, the existing conditions is pretty straightforward. Uh, I think the turning radius plan is as well. Um, and, and site signage, I think, 
two is also pretty straightforward. Obviously, all signage will conform with um, various standards and the, the state and local standards um, for um, for for schools and for accessible parking areas and so forth. We are proposing um, a couple of the. Um, you still need the microphone. Oh. I, I didn't realize you didn't have it in his hand anymore. <laughs> we, uh, on uh, Pleasant Street, we are proposing a couple um, <clears> on <throat> the side of the uh, school, um, two, um, one each, a, um, one of those flashing school signs with the uh, 20 mile an hour uh, you know, speed limit uh, during uh, school. And um, you know we have, you know also you know with regards to the utilities, we also have you know, met with the uh, fire department to go over hydrant locations and, and things of that nature. So they seem pretty um, set with what we have for location and the number of fire hydrants on, on the site here. That's actually a good point too. We've met several times with the police and fire to discuss not only hydrant locations, just general access around the site, their security concerns sight line issues and such so uh, all their comments have been incorporated into the current design okay all right all set yep all right mr fatalia thank you mr chairman uh just one comment you mentioned about this recent documents we just received about turning radius and site signage and so forth we received this at 6 30 this evening when i came in here so for me to look at this and make comments on this is not possible. I mean, I know it came in this afternoon about 3.30, 4 o'clock to our office in town, but we were not given any opportunity to, to really review this. And, and at this point, I can't comment on this this stuff until I review it, just just but, for the record. That's fair enough. Okay? Good. Fair enough. I mean, it's not really fair to us that it comes in so late Understood. for us and to my colleagues on the board to really come up with a, you know, an opinion on what you submitted. So, all right, so just so we know. But um, a couple of questions I had regarding access into the site. I, you, on the left-hand side is the the, uh, the other secondary field, correct? Where the driveway is right there? Yes. Right? So do you foresee any parents swinging in there during the day and then crossing over to drop their parent, their kids off at the school rather than making the entire loop around? What do you think, Peter? I may. Sure. Can we use this one? Might be easier. That might be easier to use. Sure. Yeah. So the question I had yes. is, do you foresee anybody driving up the access road from, from Pleasant Street on the, on the, in, on the yep. inbound lane. In the inbound, and hanging a quick left into the practice field to drop a kid off because they're running late. No, that shouldn't be happening. Okay. We've had I mean, discussions with the school department, the school department's transportation director, and okay. they, they plan to have uh, mechanisms in place to monitor and okay. to shep chaperone the parent okay. drop off. So that would probably be blocked off at the t for during. Sure that, that's, that's okay. an opportunity yeah. to, to block that. I had assumed that, but I just want to make sure, sure. that was that and, was and a. We've had extensive discussions with the school right. department. I mean, I'm, I'm, I believe the access road will work. I know there's been some discussion about, you know, the present condition there. So um, sure. when I just seen that access road there, I figured, well, hopefully no parents would be parking in there quickly because they're running late to drop off their kid or something. Right. So, uh, nonetheless, this is a continuous one way right. all the way around right. the campus. Right. So if, they, if by chance somebody did come in here, they can't take a right. They should not be taking a no, right. No, no. I'm just thinking, I, mean, I was thinking maybe them, them parking quickly, taking their kid out, and then crossing the, the access road to the school, to the Ryan School. Right. right. But uh, hopefully that won't happen. Hopefully that won't happen. Okay. Yeah, it's a pretty far distance, too, that those kids yeah, I see have it. to yeah. walk to get all the way to the entrance, yeah. so. Yeah. Some things do happen, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, sure. uh, all right, another question I had is, with the new stormwater management policies that are in place now, do you foresee any changes regarding the new regulations that we've, that are in place now? No. No, okay, no. so you're, we've, we've, we've kind of addressed those pre- Correct, you know, we, we will be in, in compliance uh, you know, with, the, with the stormwater systems and okay. the amounts, uh, the, the peak rates and volumes of, of runoff. Because the they have changed a lot, right? Yes. What's required now? 
Right, okay, all right. And um, another question I had, you mentioned about maybe improving water pressure to the residents of, of the area, Monroe, Monroe Circle and so forth, yeah? So that's foreseeable? Well, right now Monroe Circle has a six inch water line. Um, and okay. there's a eight inch water line that comes into the site and ends at about this location right here at the Ryan School. So for, from that location, we're continuing the eight inch water line to connect to the field house, you know, run through the site to feed the new school for fire and domestic water services, and then um, come around uh, to the front of the school and connect out to uh, Mineral Circle. Great. So that, that eight inch should give a, a boost of, of a little bit okay. uh, to, to that. That area right yeah. Great. You mentioned earlier about uh, the location of the grease trap for the new school. Yes. Does the Ryan School have the same grease trap here uh, in place? Um, I, 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 I'm sure. Just they, curious. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they do. I, I, okay. I haven't done an inventory myself. Just okay. Well, yeah, you, know, um, you know, our company also did the, the survey of the. Uh, um, of this, you know, site here, I, I would just have to check to to see what they found for um, either sewer manhole or a sewer tank, okay. and just to see what's. Because you're having a dedicated line from the kitchen to the grease trap, right? Correct. The, the okay. um, grease trap is up in uh, you know, this location, so there is a, a dedicated um, okay. line there with um, you no know, tees and so forth in the septic tank to. Help. So there must be a kitchen in the Ryan School, correct? Yes. Okay. Just that's new regulation also that's been in place for a while, but. So, other than that, I'm all set, Mr. Schumer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fowler. Thank you, Mr. Schumer. I have one quick, real, one quick comment. Oh, yes. I have one quick comment. Do you have a plan in here that shows the direction of travel on these roads and driveways? Uh, probably, uh, probably not in terms of uh, that's a plan that's marked up that shows arrows going. My question, then my question is, how would you determine that it's safe for vehicular and pedestrian traffic? Well, <clears throat> we will uh, develop, you know, um, the plans further that will actually show the um, markings on the road, you know, what direction to travel? There'll be a, a signage one way, no no left turn, buses only, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Are we supposed to guess? No, no. I mean, we can we can provide that documentation. Um, yes. I can point, point out. out. If you like. Please do. Yeah. I'm not sure which one it is. I'm fine with the, the larger part oh. <laughs> so, so generally speaking, it, it's almost entirely, the loop is entirely one way going this direction. Mm -hmm. um, obviously because there's no outlet from here, right. uh, this section of the road will be two ways. Yep. Uh, parking lots are all one way in the same direction as the loop. There will be some loading dock traffic that will have to be, you know, backing in, but then pulling out and going yep. the same way. This access is emergency access only. Um, so if emergency departments need to use it as two-way, I think that's probably fine. Uh, but aside from aside from this one area and the loading zone, everything flows in one direction. Very good. Thank you. That helps immensely. Another question relative to uh, Traffic in the um, those of us that probably signed the plans for the Ryan School weren't really happy with two things: student pickup and um, and the amount of parking spaces. To appease us, the common in front of the uh, Ryan School was going to be depicted, was depicted as future parking so that people wouldn't be parking out on Pleasant Street. I think they still park on Pleasant Street, waiting for children. 
I wasn't very pleased at that, and, and I thought it was just just hiding the issue. I have no problems with uh, some of the gentlemen that with here today that I've spoken with and talked to about more than this project, and I find them upfront and uh, easy to answer and understand. So if we ask a question, I want a straightforward answer. It's, it's disrespectful to push it under the table. I'm not saying you have or will, but I appreciate you getting up and giving the direction of something that should have been on a plan. Uh, I mean, you have a lot of stuff on these pretty detailed plans. And you, no one can tell me which way the traffic goes. Part of the problem with the Ryan School to this day is student pickup um, and closing and dropping off, but for the most part closing. They come in that driveway that you're calling the entrance one way, they pull over, well, first come, first serve. 40th come, you're out on Pleasant Street, and it's horrendous. I don't know how it's gone that long, as long as that school has been there. It's gotten worse and worse and worse, because no one wants to take the loser cruiser, the yellow bus. That's what they call it. The kids call it that, the loser cruiser. Um, I listen to the kids, too. So I just hope and pray that all of these things that we're seeing with the Ryan School has been addressed in the new school. Um, I look forward to dealing with this in the future. Um, I hope and pray that the parking is adequate. It looks at, you know, based on what we had before. I mean, it's a similar size school, similar population. So I can't see why you would need more than that. But, uh, oh, I, ha I did have one question. S school bus stacking when they come in, is that in the front? That, that would be in the front. The, this, the, this horseshoe? Yep. Will be, this is where the, the buses will... Uh, where the yellow line is? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Thank you. Um, I guess that is it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Delaney. Yeah, with all the meetings and all the things that have gone on, with that situation that exists Jay. on Pleasant Street. Jay. Jay. Just pull that mic to you, one of them, just because oh. with you turn, you're going to lose the pickup. Finally, you know, I've been convinced, or people have told me, that the loop that goes around the school is going to handle the pickup and drop offs. And I'm taking people's word for it. I just don't think all the time when you have a a perfect situation that people react to a perfect situation. But I'm willing to go along with what Mr. Fowler was talking about and what I've been talking about right along. That's the only problem that I could see with the building of this school, was what took place. We're spending $100 million, and I, wanna, I keep saying to myself, I want to make sure with that $100 million that we're spending, that the Pleasant Street situation is taken care of. And slowly but surely, the more we talk about it, the loop that goes around is, is the answer from everybody I talk to. I just got to hope that that's the real thing and it gets monitored that way. The other thing is, with the storm water that you've been talking about, there's a tremendous amount of roof, water, driveways, and so forth. With the things that you're building to hold the storm water, is there, in no way will this affect a, like a, a tremendous amount of water going in to the wetlands all at one time? No. It won't affect the wetlands no. one, all at one well, time. It, 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 as I said, we, we are required 
un under the DEP stormwater management guidelines that we cannot increase the amount of runoff from you know, leaving the sites, or in, in this case, going to the wetlands or going off site you know, to any abutting properties. We cannot increase it. So we are capturing all of that rainwater on the site here, and we've got a number of subsurface infiltration systems that will collect that water, recharge it, and because of the, the good soil that we encountered over there, you know, we'll recharge that you know, into the ground, and you know, any spillovers you know, from it, any of those larger storms that are quick hit storms, and um, you know, the, there's a little capacity in the, in the system there, it'll overflow into the, towards the wetlands there. But it's, it, there, there is a, a decrease, in, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in peak rate and volume of runoff you know, going to the uh, to wetlands. I think, uh, I think basically through the meetings and so forth that we've been going to and listening to and so forth, the, the questions that I have, I think have been answered. I just wanna, the only thing I wanna make sure of is that the pickups and drop-offs are monitored the way the people say they're gonna be done at the school. Because all it takes is one mother late for work in the morning to, to drop her child off someplace through that loop if she's tied up. You know, and I wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Fowler. I forgot one question that falls in line with what I asked before. Mm -hmm. Are the times for the Ryan and the question mark school staggered? How much of the staggering? Any idea? Yes, I can answer they that. They are staggered. Oh, thank yes. you. There are about 45 minutes difference, both drop off and pick up. And Very with good. respect to the whole conversation about traffic and parental drop off and parental pick up, and such as the questions good. that were asked. Good. We have had a lot of conversations many times, not only from the board yeah. such as yourself or town agencies such as the police department. Right. The school department is very adamant about controlling the traffic and having monitors in place and control features to make sure the traffic flow is equal and, and flowing and there's no disruption. Thank you. All right, okay. So some of these I think we've kind of discussed, I want to say them out loud again. So uh, for the loop, there'll be um, speed reduction measures put in to make sure all throughout uh, so that you know no one's using it as a speedway to get around to the back, you know, the front side, because we, 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 have, used, yeah. we have strategically placed uh, raised crosswalks yep. um, at locations around the, the perimeter of that roadway. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and, and Mr. Fowler had asked about you know at some point you know bring us in a plan that shows the you know the direction, the side, all that stuff. But I think included in that just as more of an FYI. If you could give us, and I'm not asking you to give it to me wrapped around the entire loop, but a, um, a cue of how many cars you can, you can have. Because, I mean, again, everybody has this, they know what they see there now, sure. the way the cars queue up. I don't know exactly how many cars are at the Ryan School in the morning, but obviously this is a one-way loop. It's enormous. I don't care. If you had both schools show up there at the same time, I still don't think you could possibly line up enough cars to wrap around this entire thing. So I can't see how anybody could possibly end up out on the Pleasant Street. But if you could just give us a number to some place over on that sort of northern port. That shows yeah. the length of cars in that queue. Right. Yeah. Um, just, just as an idea of exactly how many cars would wrap around this thing before sure. you could possibly end up stuck back out on to Maximum. Yeah. From the, from the drop-off point all around the loop. Yeah, you don't have to put them all on there. Don't do no, no, <laughs> no, no. all drawn. Just give me yeah, a number. No, no, I know. You know, draw a few over here in the drop-off maybe, but, you know, I don't want them all wrapped around. Um, you know, so for the, for, from that perspective, I, I, I have a hard time envisioning a way in which the queue can end up back out onto Pleasant Street. Um, well, it would be magic to me to see how a, that many cars could possibly be there oh, yeah, at one time. You can't, you can't, you can't just yell stuff out. You're welcome to come up, and we'll debate it in a minute if you want. But um, for my time right now, I can't envision how you could possibly queue up enough cars to wrap around this entire site. It, 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 it's just an enormous number of cars that you could during school time that you could possibly wrap around this building. Um, well, we, we've nearly tripled the amount of parking spaces than what is there right now. 
Well, I'm just, but I want to. I want to treat it as if people are just dropping off and leaving and not parking. I'll go to the parking in a second because I want to just hear the number again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying in terms of just if everybody's dropping off and leaving and nobody's staying for any reason other than the teachers, obviously, um, you know, then you know that the amount of cars that has to be is it has to be enormous because of the size of this loop. And since it's one way and doesn't leave room to you know to go backwards at all. Everybody has to go in the same direction anyways, and the drop-off is at the furthest point through. So there's no reason to stop anywhere on the first side, you know, for drop-off. So that, that's, I mean, that's the only one that would have to be controlled, is that when you come into the Ryan on the short side, that no one can drop off where they used to. You have to continue the loop to come around the other side for drop off. That's the only place where you could have a problem is if you come in and try and do a short side drop that you, you know, it, it, needs to, it needs to force everybody to go away from there and do the loop. That's the only place. Um, obviously, you know, they don't come into the bus loop. They can't go in there. So their only choice is to go around. Um, I, I said it before, it, this is just for me, uh, you know, the, the walk from where the buses are to the new elementary school is a little bit of a walk for the, the elementary students for inclement weather. There is nothing above them. So they're gonna have to run pretty quick from the buses into the building if it's raining out. Um, you know, but other than that, I, you know, it's only so much you can put in, I suppose. Um, if you, when you guys come back in, I, I, I presume you have more of them, but if you could bring more of the renderings Yes. Of, of the item, because it's, it's a lot easier sometimes to see these in sort of the 3D look sure. of how things look, just, you know, for people. And again, when we put them up here on the easels, it's a little easier for the audience to see generally what it is that's going to be in a certain place when we're talking about whether it's the school, the stadium, whatever it is. Um, even that front section where you're now going to have the school gone, what's it going to look like? You know, and it's, it's, it's nice to have those up uh, for folks to be able to see. We can do that, it's not a problem. And without having an opportunity to look at the signage plan, is there any intent of having um, any kind of an electronic sign at all like the high school has? Yes, uh, okay. as the main sign in front of the school, yes. Okay. That is the intent. Okay. So uh, did, uh, I have up here, there was a list, and you guys have supplied some of these items tonight. So I'm, I'm guessing that they came from you being told that some of these things were missing. But did you get a list of items from the town planner of items that were not yet submitted? That's the list from the town planner. Yes, we did get a list from the town planner. Okay, because, yes. well, those, those are the plans. But I've got traffic study, existing conditions plan, layout plan, master sign plan, drainage calculations, land disturbance permit, I'll get to that in a second. Turning radius plan and locust map. Those were all items that needed to be submitted. Um, I list, I see that, you know, you have some of the plans submitted, but some of these other items, I wanna make sure you know that these need to come in. Yes. Um, as far as the land disturbance permit, obviously you guys are disturbing enough space that either you ask for the permit, you ask for the waiver. Uh, as a general rule, we, we grant the waiver because the rest of it gets covered by someone else. So if it's in your intent to request the waiver, just tell us that. Okay. We can tell you right now. Yep. We'd like to request a waiver. Okay. So we'll, we'll add that to the we'll add that to the list. Um, for now, I think I'm all set with what we have so far. Obviously, as Mr. Battaglia mentioned, some of this is pretty new to us, so you know, we'll take time to look at those things. And obviously, you have some more things that'll need to come in um, as well. And you know, you need to get you know get everything dealt with with the town engineer and you know all those sign offs. You did mention earlier that you, 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 know, you have the fire and the police, that they're, they're uh, satisfied with what you have. Uh, it would be best if we had something from them that says the same thing, um, even if they just confirm it through, you know, through, through the department, just to make sure that we know um, that they signed off on everything sure. that you guys have shown them that we only just now saw the plan of. Yeah. So. Um, we can provide the minutes from those meetings and we will probably circle back around with um, both of those agencies just as a matter of kind of standard design. Okay. So. All right, so that's it for me for now. Um, we'll open up to the audience with anyone in the audience who has any questions, comments, or concerns. We'll leave that one up. 
Maybe we could just pull the other easel forward if that's something they need to use. But I'd like to have the main picture stay up uh, for people's use. So if you just state your name and your address for the record. Sure. Uh, Phyllis Skidlin, 11 Monroe Circle, Shakespeare. Um, I am, this is Monroe Circle along here, and many of my neighbors are present because we have a concern about this whole project. Um, I'm speaking as a Tixbury resident, taxpayer, and a budding homeowner on Monroe Circle. I have diligently been following attending many elementary school building committee many, meetings since November of last year, have written several articles to help notify fellow taxpaying residents to pro of project developments and also met many times with the town manager, uh, Richard Montori, to help the Monroe abutters understand the impact of this extensive and expensive project. I and my, I'm gonna speak for them anyway, and my fellow neighbors still have many questions and concerns about how that how this whole project has been handled and hope this planning board can help us in our efforts to have our voices heard and understand our plight as our whole home living environment is about to change. The primary purpose of the building, of building this $97 million school complex next to the Ryan School on Pleasant Street was to move all the second, third, and fourth grade students out of the current dilapidated school buildings to a new school building to provide a safer, better learning environment. The push to build the new school now was to take advantage of the available 30, $32 or $37 million from the MSBA uh, program, the state program, which took very qualified for. I want to focus on the tax implications for the Tuxbury. Um, so, ma'am, yes. as I said, it has nothing again, to do with it's, it's how the money's being spent. It doesn't matter. That's not what we handle here. So that's so, what I, I said at the beginning. We're not going to relitigate how much the school costs. No, I'm not. A, okay, but um, Whoa, careful. what I'm concerned about is the point that they're going to be building the athletic field first before they even touch the school. That's what I'm concerned about. And again, that's part of a different board. That's not, we, we're not determining the, the construction schedule for the project here. Okay, what about transparency in the planning of this project? Because there's a lot that was even said tonight. We've gone to many meetings every time, and none of this that was said today about the extra 200, uh, 150 uh, parking spaces, about um, where the uh, pipes are going to be going out in the Monroe Circle, where 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 we live. Do, do you have any any input into any of that? Because that's what we're concerned about. Well, I can't speak to what happened at other meetings when these things were discussed. Those are other boards. But they weren't discussed. That's the whole I, point. Right. I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not going to determine whether they were or were not. If it was discussed this evening, it's part of our public hearing. If you'd like to discuss any of those things, feel free to. Okay. But I'm not going to decide from here whether or not these things were or were not discussed anywhere else because I wasn't part of those discussions. I wasn't at those meetings. You know, if it was discussed at a selectman's meeting, I have no idea. I wasn't there. I'm not going to make a determination as to whether or not it was discussed. If it's brought up here, feel free to discuss. But, but can I make a point that it was not discussed? You can state your opinion that That's it was not discussed. Opinion. I don't know. All of this is my opinion. All right. right but All I, of this is my opinion. But I want to stick to the things that are brought up here. And if you want to discuss any of those items you just did, feel free to. But not about whether they were discussed or not. Here's your chance, because they are being discussed here. Thank you. Me off here. Find your place. Your time stopped when you when you knocked down your picture. So I'll give you a second. So the, the let me. I guess let me just ask you the point that they are going to be, well, this, let me just tell you one major point that I want to bring up. This is a rendering of the floodplain. This is from their documents that they've handed out. 
about uh, no disturbed lines, no build, no wetlands. This is the new field, and here's the new school that they're going to be building. And the plan is to build this first while apparently they're going to be preparing this land. So there's a construction site going on here. They're trying to build this school to have it ready for the 2020 football field season. There'll be no field house, no bleachers, no uh, toilets and all that. Sorry. Um, and it's just the point to have that available. Also noting that this is in, a, it's, it's in an area that has in the past been marked as concerning with the water table as far as this floodplain and all these other lines that I just mentioned. Um, so we have a concern, or I have a, I have a concern about them putting this field out here in a construction area over here um, first, before this is, even the money has been taken out to, to build the school. What I wanted to bring up about the taxes is that out of 65, I don't understand why that's not, $65 million is left on the taxpayers. But with all due respect, this board does not handle the money. That's why I said at the beginning that we weren't going to discuss the cost of the project or how it's being spent. We do not deal with that. That is not our board. So the tax implications, whatever they may be, positive, negative, for wh whatever your opinion may be of them, there is nothing this board can do regarding those things. That's why I discussed at the beginning why we were going to not try to discuss those things where, where because we don't handle that. Okay, where would I go for that? Well, man, wasn't that, wasn't that discussed at town meeting when voted on by the residents to appropriate, appropriate that kind of money for, for this project? I mean, it wasn't the five of us on this board. I mean, well, that, was, I that went to town meeting, and it was approved at town meeting to allocate the money for the new Which school. Which was done by 4% of the voting residents. Okay, but you, you're doing exactly what I asked you not to do. And okay. if you continue to discuss the topics that this board does not handle, okay. I will end your time and move on to someone else. Because I can't keep telling you that it's not something that we can deal with here. Okay, town meeting, the selectmen, that's where you want to go for that kind of thing. This is not what this board does. So even if you had the most perfect argument against whatever, it, it isn't something this board could do anything about. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Fowler. Possibly, uh, we all know that there is a committee that has been formated to build this, to design and build it. That's probably the place where this young lady and uh, anyone else is interested in doing, bringing that information that, or questions that they have. Is that a correct? Yes. That okay. Correct. I just got a yes from two of the members. So, um, if I can just speak for just a few seconds. No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to wrap it up again. I just want to make sure that you understand that we, if it involves the zoning matters involved with this project and, and connected to the site plan that's being filed, that's us. If you want to discuss the building, the the building scheduling, or which is being built first or second or any of those things, that is not us. The tax implications are not us. Where you started to discuss, you know, something, some impact in the neighborhood and want to ask some questions about drainage, that kind of thing, you can ask those questions here. But a lot of what you want to bring up is the same stuff that people keep bringing up online and stuff. The product's been approved. So any complaints or concerns you have about a lot of that stuff is either the time has passed or it's somewhere else to be dealt with. It's not here to continue litigating those matters. At this point, we're talking about site plan special permit for a project that has been approved. So that's what we can discuss. Okay. So if you have some of those questions, I would suggest stick to those for this purpose, and we'll try and get you some answers. As a taxpayer, what I'm concerned about are that, no, I'm, no, I'm going to cut off. The, um, these lines, I have just a question, do those lines mean anything about development? in those areas. Okay, so one, it's really more of a conservation issue, but I'd like to see if you guys could answer the question here. Um, I prefer you did, because it would help, you know, again, maybe. Uh, yeah, sure, um, I'd be happy to jump in. Those lines definitely do mean something, and uh, we've been respecting and presenting those lines right from the get-go. 
And Bill, maybe you can walk us through the floodplain line and the no build, do not disturb lines as they relate to uh, our project. And this is information that we have been presenting on a regular basis. Correct. The blue line here represents the FEMA flood line shown as elevation 115 on the latest FEMA, um, FEMA map. And you know, that's been you know, transposed you know, onto, onto this. But as I said, it, it goes by, there's a dedicated elevation you know, to it for that floodplain, which is elevation 115. Now, based on the survey that our company did um, um, several months ago, you know, on, on this site, this elevation you know, 115 is you know, through this area here. And what we have done is we have filed a LOMA, a letter of map amendment to FEMA to amend this floodplain designation that is just a random tool that is used by FEMA, you know, um, you know, and remove this portion of the floodplain and get it into its proper location on the site. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. Um, I guess the only thing that I'll, I'll I'll bring up then is. My concern of about a lot of unknown costs that have not been covered, like traffic lights. There's probably going to be a traffic light that's needed. Isn't that part of the the pattern of what's happening in the Not the costs of, but if there's going to be a traffic light somewhere or signage on the, on the space, yes. But if you're talking about cost, that's not us. I, I just I, I understand it's frustrating, but I, I, I tried to be clear. We don't we don't deal with the money. That that's not this board's job. So anything that's money related isn't us. Now, if you think there aren't enough traffic lights, if you think they should be more, or do that's us. You can talk to us about that. But how much a traffic light costs, or whether it's been included in the in the budget, it's not us. And there's nothing we could do about it, even if we found that. Well, okay, let me just, okay, so. Well, no, no, we're not doing tag team. You'll have your time. If you're finished, that's fine. We'll move on to the next person, but yeah. we're not, we're not going to tag off and, you okay. know, continue that way. Okay, I'll be done in one minute, I promise. All right. And that. I'm well, not rushing you. Take well, your time. Just it's all right. Like I, I just wasn't expecting any of this. I thought I was going to read this through, and then they got totally kibosh. Um, I have heard many times that, this loop is going to hold around at least 100. I've, I've heard 150 cars. We have a lot of questions about whether that's going to be done or not. People waiting 150 cars worth to leave their kid off because they already don't do what they're supposed to do with the Ryan. Mm -hmm. So there's already been problems on uh, Mount Ple on Pleasant Street, Summer Street, a lot of times, especially when things are blocked up with construction is a mess that you can't even get out of our road here. Um, I'm just trying to think how I can put it so that you listen. <laughs> listen to me. Um, I'm concerned about... Just bring the mic back over. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm concerned about the, uh, the high water table that we have here and whether or not uh, building, like for instance, these are the bleachers that are supposed to be a uh, thousand, thousand capacity seat bleachers that are going very close to no disturb and uh, all these topographical lines here. Um, the whole idea, there was a, a traffic study that was done that kind of gave everything an okay, that everything was going to be fine. But as was already stated, there are still problems. They did not really address the problems that exist today. So by adding, this is about 550 kids, this is about 750 kids. By adding more, you know, another 700 kids here, they're probably going to need to put a light in there, which was half mentioned at a meeting. It's not in any plan, but it's kind of half mentioned. And I'm just plain concerned about how much, I mean, this is what it looks like right now, and how much they are just kind of shoving into this whole area where we're sitting right here. Um, it's just going to change our whole life. 
and that's the way it is. But there's so much you can expect, you can accept. We accept what's happening with most of it. But when, I, I'm gonna just say it again, when we're told just last week that they're gonna build this thing back here in wetter areas, lower wetter areas, before this is done, and the, and the, before this is done, um, it's very upsetting that we feel that, the, I feel, that transparency in the development of this plan has not been there. Even just what was presented today, we were, I was at a meeting on Thursday with the, uh, the school committee, the elementary school building committee, I go every time, and none of that, the, you know, there's 135 parking spots and now there's over 300. And I'm thinking, I couldn't see what it was, but I'm saying, well, my God, where did they put the, the other parking spots? Why wasn't that stated last week? That's the, the transparency of this whole uh, pro, uh, process, project, has been very questionable at best. So anyway, um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the only comment I'll make about the parking and why it would be brought up here is they're required to tell us how many spaces are going to be on the site as part of their presentation to us. Whether it wasn't, it wasn't discussed anywhere else, I have no idea, but the reason it's discussed here is that they're required to tell us how many parking spaces are gonna be on the site before and then after the project. Um, so that's why it would be brought in to us and why it would be shown on a plan here. Where else it may be discussed, I don't wanna to speak to. I'm just saying that's why it's brought up here and why we discuss it, okay? Can I make a comment? Sure. And just, just that, um, we're concerned about how much is being pushed into this very small, congested, questionable quality of land, uh, the, the, the way the land is, how much is being put on there. So to say that they're adding another 100 spaces or something, we're thinking, where? Because they already have a chock full amount of Stop. Would you would you like me to have them show you where they've added them from where no, they are I can now? Do it another, okay. Look another time. Thank All right. you. All right. Uh, anyone else with any questions, comments, or concerns? Come on up. Just, uh, wait till you get up. Just state your name and your address for the record, and then the floor is yours. Teresa Duke Shia Monroe Circle. Um, my concern is at another meeting, uh, the superintendent of school uh, was concerned that they're already before shovel has even hit the ground not enough space for what for his administration which is going to be in that school I, again is that, that, that that's not to do with the planning committee that, that's that's the interior of the buildings in terms of where they're going to put everybody I that's something just discussed amongst the school committee and elsewhere that's we wouldn't alter the building to, to make more space for the administration offices. That it's not, it's not something we would do here. I, I, and I wasn't at the meeting where the superintendent raised his concerns about space. It's, again, we'd be back to the school committee building, building school, you know, I'm sorry. School building, school building yeah. committee to discuss those kind of items. Um, we work basically with the footprint of the building, uh, the not the interior. The building isn't large enough for what we need it for. Okay, well, but we, when it's brought here, it's to talk about, again, in the footprint as it is, how it's being set up on the inside is not for us to determine. Isn't there a certain square footage um, allotted per employee or per student? Yes. Wouldn't there be a certain square footage allotted for that? Do you, I, I don't know if I should jump in here or yes. if this is right. the forum, but um, there's, um, the square footage of the building, you know, has been negotiated and calculated in conjunction with the MSBA guidelines, um, discussions with the school, taking into account the spaces that uh, exist now at the district offices. So, I mean, that's how that all comes into play. Um, there's room there, uh, for everybody that they've requested space for. I mean, we met several times with Brenda and Chris to lay out those office spaces like that. I think Chris is, uh, one of Chris's concerns were like, you know, if you look at their space right now, I mean, 
they're in an old school building kind of retrofit in there. So like their office is a classroom, you know, obviously they're not going to get, you know, a classroom office in the, in the new building, but that was the short of it, at the meeting. but the short of it was that, yes, there is, we've talked with the school department on many occasions to, to figure out exactly what they need and to give them, give them what they need space wise. You know, I mean, it, it, it. Well, just so you as the planning board understand that the superintendent of school expressed he didn't feel as though there was going to be enough space for his staff. And where is the, the need for growth at that point either? Does Tuxbury not take that into account that you want growth for the future? And here we are building another school without room for growth. Mr. Chairman. But, Hold on. Is that public? I, I, I have to ask this question. Sure. Was that public? Was that a public comment by the superintendent at a meeting? It was at an elementary school board meeting. So would that be public? Yes. Um, so hold on, but, but I, I'd don't like to address. Me, but come up here and speak with me. Hold on, so Miss. Everything gets directed to me, not to the audience. As far as leaving room for growth in the school, has that or has that not been addressed? That has been addressed as part of the uh, design with the MSBA. You've got to uh, you've got to dedicate a space where you know the school can be increased by a certain percentage. I don't recall off the top of my head what that percentage is. I don't know if you know, but but yes, that has been talked about. Okay. Did you have something to add? No. Oh, you're just coughing. I'm just <laughs> yes, that's fine. Okay. All right. Did you have something else? I didn't have my, my answer. The so answer to whether there, or not there's enough space in the school? Sure. Is, is, does, I'm sorry, could is you just restate what you just said? Growth? There is planning for growth as part of the process with the MSBA, as part of our design. We've got to show where this building can be expanded. And as we've talked about at um, a few meetings now, um, you could potentially add a story onto this building where we have one section that's Correct, two stories. Which is right by my home, right. and I was told that there would only be two stories going up on right. that section. And there, there is. Yeah. There's only going to be two stories in that section, but that's the that's the space that was earmarked for potential growth if that should happen. But the MSBA, you know. These schools are developed based upon enrollment projections that are done by an independent um, agency. And it's just one of the things that we have to accommodate for. And you've accommodated it for what sort of percentage of, of growth? I can get back whatever that percentage. I don't recall the exact percentage, but that was the space in the building we a con we earmarked as potential growth. So currently, as the building is going to be built, there is no growth potential unless we go back to the taxpayers requesting more money. No. Uh, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, I don't believe that's what you just said. What? That there is no room for growth in the building as it's being built now. There is room for growth in the building. As, then as, why would the superintendent of schools at the elementary school board, am I, am I incorrect? You, you were at the meeting, so maybe I misunderstood. All right, I'm going to go against my better judgment here. And Could I have any one of the people that were at this come up, please? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Just state your name for the record. Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you. My name is Ann Marie Stornick. I am the chairman of the elementary building committee. The, I was not at the meeting where the superintendent did express that he was concerned with the space of the administrative offices. However, I did have the opportunity to speak with the town manager who was present, as well as the project manager regarding the concerns allayed by the superintendent. The issue is similar to what our designer has spoken to is that the current office space that the administration has is very large and the space that they are moving into is not as large. 
In the last meeting, I was speaking with members of the administration who have several ideas to address this situation. Um, when in the past they did, were not in the, housed in that building, there were other components that were of the administration staff, similar to IT wasn't located all in one central office. The superintendent at one time was at the doing school. The IT was at the high school. So there is room for that. In order to pick up everything that is currently in the administration office and put it into the space that is at the new proposed site in locations, the office space definitely is a smaller space. But in terms of person to person, that's not the issue. The other thing is we have been speaking, and I think that um, people are aware of this, about working on the DPW and the storage of the equipment for the maintenance and facilities department. So we are looking at that as well. So basically that's a big component of it, is where the maintenance people will be held. So the concerns are the maintenance and the IT, which the school department could be addressing through other means. But it's basically because we're not building a whole new school. Um, I'm not sure what the square footage of uh, the current space is off the top of my head, but it is not replicated in the new building. Okay. Does that help? Okay, thank you. My second question is the traffic study that was done. Mm -hmm. um, the superintendent also had brought up that his concern about the traffic study, and I am not verbatim, I, I you know, don't have his exact words, but that he now wants a traffic light, which also you need to go back to the taxpayers for more money for that. What was the purpose of spending all that money for a traffic study if you know they didn't know that you needed a traffic light? Okay. I, not part of the planning board so, again? Don't be a wise guy. I was going to ask the question. What I was going to say is that when the traffic studies are done, things that are required are one thing. Things that might be suggested are something else. So there might be a suggestion that a street light would be a good idea, but it's not a requirement, which is why it wouldn't be an absolute. So the superintendent could ask for one, then it would be a determination as to whether or not to do it, as opposed to when a traffic light is required. But I appreciate the snark. But I'll see if I can get a better answer for you from the table. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, we did do a traffic study, and I, I don't have it committed to memory, um, but I do not believe a, um, a light was required by that traffic study. I believe you guys have it now, too, because I think we submitted it as part of Yeah, it was one of the links on the list package. that didn't come in in this package, but I think you may have already. Right. We're going to want to look at that, that again, though. So it, we can look at that, or you guys can look at that, uh, and we can come back to you next time. Well, just want a more definitive answer the, between the required and the not required, sure. and then we can follow up on the superintendent's comment on it. Uh, he's not in the room, so I don't know. It's kind of hard to know what exactly his concerns may or may not be. I, I don't recall him. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I, I, I don't recall him saying that. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's yeah. free to, he's more than welcome to suggest yep. adding one. We'll yep, right. determine after that whether it's warranted or not. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with any questions, comments, or concerns? Please come up. Yep, oh, absolutely. Come up. I'm Donna Haynes from 12 Room Road Circle. I just have one question, and I'm very curious about the uh, bringing the sewerage onto Monroe Circle, okay? And the reason I'm questioning about it is I want to know that, that some, this one thing gets done before you just mark in your plan that that's what you're going to do, and that is find out whether that pumping station that they put in on Monroe Circle to service 12 houses is going to take care of the capacity of what they're going to be putting into it. Because, you know, and we had, we already have had a flood down there once because of the runoff on the street. Because there's no, no drainage, you know, no 
no control of one or one streets in this town in many places. And we waited years. We were at the end of the line to get the sewage. And we've already had problems with it. And I want to know, you know, what, are you sure that that public station is going to take care of you? Yes, and I think Bill might be better to answer that question. <clears throat> Well, just if you're still saying, <laughs> yes. Well, our, our intent is to um, upsize the, the pumps in the pumping station to, to handle the, the capacity from this um, from this sewer flows, you know, from this um, building. But you know, it's it's not an awful lot of sewer flows that this school is going to generate, just because of the uh, code compliance uh, plumbing fixtures and things of that nature that reduce the amount of water that is brought into the school and then is discharged through through sewer pipes and, and so forth. So uh, maybe just expand on that. Just want so everybody understands that what I sort of in layman's terms, the facilities are built in a way that reduces, you know, you, more up to date than what people might be thinking in terms of the school bathroom, I guess sure. would be the best way to explain it. Right, well, it's, it's all based on population. Um, you know, they, they assume, you know, based on the type of school and the number of students and staff at that school, it'll generate, um, you know, say five gallons per day per student or staff member, you know, at the site there. So if you have 800 students and staff, you know, it's going to technically generate about 4,000 gallons of sewage, uh, you know, per day. But it's also because of the um, plumbing fixtures that are used. You know, we typically see anywhere from a third or, or more of, uh, you know, less water flows, um, you know, being used. I can tell you for um, a school that I did a few years ago where we um, designed a septic system for just under 10,000 gallons per day. And we installed some, um, in the pump controls, we installed uh, you know, timers and some other measures to measure the amount of sewer flows that were um, discharging through these pumps. And we found that for a school that was designed for just under 10,000 gallons per day, it was generating a little over 3,000 gallons per day. And that was because of all of the plumbing fixtures um, you know, they have you know, low, low flow you know, toilets and urinals and things of that nature. So it, it, it does do its job, you know, those, those type of plumbing fixtures, which, which will be part of this, this project as well. We're required to um, employ those in, this, um, in all new buildings. Great. Anyone else with any other questions, comments, or concerns? Come on up. Man, six Monroe Circle. I'm going to buy. Um, I have a little question about the loop road here. Um, on on this map right here, it's all flat. My property happens to be right here, and there's a height differential. Right now, it's about three feet. Eventually, goes to seven feet. According to the last planning meeting, they said that they were going to be uh, filling that in, and it would go from two feet to four and a half feet. So I'm gonna have a retaining wall there. Right now, what they're gonna put up is a stockade fence on top of this retaining wall. I'm gonna be about 23 feet from the road itself. I'm concerned about the fact that we're gonna have people going around this road. It's gonna get icy, it's gonna to have to get plowed. I'm afraid that if somebody loses it, stockade fence is not gonna stop them from coming through that and into my yard. So I would prefer to have something more substantial there, Jersey barriers, some sort of barriers there to keep people from, from, from coming into my yard. I also have this loading dock here where semi-trucks are going to be backing in and out. So I'm worried about somebody backing out of there or, or pulling in there and they get ice and they just keep on going and go right through it, through the stockade fence. That's all they have there. <laughs> what? Um, just out of curiosity, what is the what is the posted speed limit for this road going to be listed at? Um, would you? I don't know. If Bill, <coughs> five, five, ten. I don't know what. The, I don't. I, I don't know what the posted yeah, speed limit. Yeah. 
I'm just trying to guesstimate like the, the, the speed at which someone would, if they even hit ice, how far exactly they're going to get. That's to to term, you know to address what he's well, discussing. Yeah, and maybe Sam, you can kind of walk us through what happens along that that northern boundary in terms of where we have the fence, we have a tree line, um, and and how the swale works there. So um, that might help. Kind of. Right, but you're not near a microphone, so you'd have to come back up to the table. Sorry, we, we also have uh, a barrier there basically curbing on, on both sides of that driveway. So it would be a, a have a six inch reveal, so it, it will stop you know vehicles if if there is some sort of runaway to, to, to some point. We've also got you know screening um, you know, there with um, some tall shrubs and you know so forth. I don't want to cut you up, but I mean again when we look at sort of the landscaping and all that mixed in, we'll probably maybe we'll get a better idea, but um, like I said, I wanted to make sure we have some answers for what he's asking about. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up, because I brought this up before the building committee several months ago, and one of their members thought it was funny that I would bring it up and consider that somebody would go through a fence. So I was like, I went to the next, I went to a meeting where I brought it up, I went to their next meeting, and they were talking about it and laughing about it. How can you believe somebody would actually think that somebody would go through that? I'm not so worried about the the uh, people going around dropping off the kids because you're going to only go over five miles an hour. But this is a football stadium. You're going to have high school kids. You got a nice long stretch there to take mom and dad's car out and kind of wind it up a little bit. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's the middle of winter, and all of a sudden they're trying to make this little career right here. And they kind of don't do it, and it, they go right through. That's what I'm worried about. I just don't want anything happen like that. And if I digress into like some part of this, that, which is the Conservation Commission just pointed out to me, okay. just let me know, okay? Um, um, you're putting in these drains. I have questions about the drains. How how deep are these drains? Well, they're, they're, they, they are a few feet deep. I understand that, but how are they? Two feet? Are they four feet? Are they eight feet? Well, the, the chambers that we plan to use are about two and a half feet tall, with stone on the on the bottom and on the top of them, okay. as well as on the sides. Okay, because DPW requires uh, to be two feet above the water table uh, when you did your test borings. Were you able to see what the water level was like when you did your test borings? I got a report, and it states that you hit water in some places at three feet to twelve and a half feet. So, you know, if, if you're, gonna, if you're liable to have some of this water, you're going to have uh, standing water in these drains at all times. Uh, they just did some more digging um, recently, five new uh, diggings for the, uh, for the drains themselves, for the DPW. And uh, I was at the last uh, the plan book, the meeting that they had for the school committee there. And they were asked, did they strike water? And they said, yes, they struck water on those. I'm really concerned that there's a very high water table in this whole area. I've lived in this area, this area. I've lived in that particular house all my life. I grew up there, I bought the house when my, my, when my parents died, I bought it. So I know this area very well. I mean, in my yard, if you, if you dig down seven feet, you hit water, you hit the water table. So. I'm concerned that you're going to put these drains in and they're going to be filled up with groundwater first and only half of them are going to be working. So that's one of the main concerns I have about these tables. The, the so in regards to your, um, what you heard about for the uh, soil data, yes, on the, the last day that we did soil testing, we did do five test pits. We did do two test pits over in the satellite parking area, and because we were close to the wetlands, yes, in, in one of those you know holes, we in, encountered water. I think um, five feet down or so. In all the other holes that we dug, we found no water whatsoever. You know, we we dug um, you know 12 feet down on areas to the north of the site, um, in, in back of your property, as well as to the east of the site. 
um, over by the existing uh, football field and uh, you know, so forth. And we encountered no water in any of those areas. All we encountered was sand um, all the way down. So, On these drains, are you gonna have um, oil and gasoline removal systems? Because you are, in, you are gonna have parking lots, you are gonna have cars, you're gonna have leaking gas, you're gonna have leaking oil. You're gonna have that to remove that so it doesn't go out into the wetlands? We, we are required um, through uh, DEP, the stormwater management guidelines, to um, you know, have a minimum of 80% TSS, which is total suspended solids, which are you know, typical of what you uh, just indicated. We intend to have deep sun put in catch basins. We intend to have water quality um, structures, such as storm, tep uh, so, uh, storm septers, for techniques, um, you know, things of that nature, to improve the quality of water that discharges from the site there. So any trappings of, say, oils or greases from vehicles um, will be captured either in the catch basins, in the drain manholes, or in the water quality structures for the town to um, remove those um, items, typically by vacuuming out the, the structures themselves. Does this board have, um, uh, uh, right now I'm, I'm looking at some of the areas that are gonna be filled. Is that related to the Conservation Commission or is that part of your? Um, well, ask your question because you might be able to get an answer tonight even if it's someone else's to regulate. Okay. You might be able to, it, some of it's overlap. So it's ask your question, we might be okay. able to get you an answer. Great, thank you. Um, right now this is the vernal pool here and they're filling in this section right here, because right there, now this, let me this over here. This right here is all. You can uh, take that off there. You, yeah, there you, go. there you go. Thanks very much. Uh, this whole section right here is gonna be filled in because, and they're gonna need a waiver to do that because it's with the, within the 200 foot uh, of this, this vernal pool. And they're also gonna need a waiver because they're gonna have to build a road over it. So I, I just want to state that that's going to be a waiver there, I believe. And then down here, this road over here, this lower part of it is in a no-build zone too. So they might, be, and this part is being filled in here too. So they believe they're going to have to have put in a waiver for that. But I think that's going through the Conservation Commission. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's why I figured. Um, I have a question about the field house right here. Right now, um, there's a tension pond that's right here. And what they're doing is uh, they're gonna fill that detention pond and then they're gonna build part of the field house on top of it. I really don't think that's a very good idea because they're gonna have to, I don't know what they're gonna have to do. They're gonna have to pull out the mud and everything. That, guy, that detention pond's been in there since at least 2000. So there's mud, there's reeds, there's all kinds of stuff, and then you're gonna have to pull that out and dry it out, I guess, and then fill it back in, and then you're gonna put a building. From what I estimate from the size of the, of the building itself and where the detention pond outlet is, I wanna say it's roughly maybe a quarter to a third front part of the building is gonna be on in that detention pond. Sure. That, that pond was constructed as part of the uh, Ryan School, and it is a um, basin that is not applicable to the zone to the uh, Conservation Commission. It was built after 1996, and um, we, as I said, we received an ORAD from the um, Conservation Commission for the wetland delineations, and um, the town's consultants. Um, did review that, we walked the site to look not only at the wetlands, but also at that detention basin. And he agreed that that was non-jurisdictional and that we, because it was man-made, we are free to um, do with it as we want. And in this case, we're, we're filling in that area there for construction of the, the field and the, the field house. If you're letting me go a little bit, um, that, Tension pond was de deemed under uh, uh, stating that it was it was built after 1996, and that does not make it wetlands. And this was uh, off or, or stated by Nietzsche Engineering. But I went into the uh, 
Town of Tewksbury Conservation Commission and Wetlands Protection Bylaws of 2013. Basically, it states in a number of places that a pond can be a man-made structure or it can be a natural occurring structure. And it shall include any substantial open body of fresh water with a surface observed or recorded within 10 years prior to the date of application. So I'm going to assume that this was in application, let's say, 2018. So it was definitely in existence before 2008. Uh, of at least 5,000 square feet, ponds may be either natural occurring or made man-made by impoundment, excavation, or otherwise. Pond shell contains standing water except for periods of extended drought. For the purpose of this definition, extended drought shall be defined at uh, 3010 CMR 10.58.2 as it may be amended. Um, notwithstanding the above, the following man-made bodies of open water shall not be considered ponds, swimming pools, or other impervious man-made basins. So, I have a question. I don't think, I don't think you can do no, it, but that's I a think conservation it's a question. But you got rolling, so I let you finish. Um, <laughs> but that. That's for them, they have to clear everything with conservation on those items. Either they have or have to deal with that with them. But okay. can you I are correct, the, it's, the, it's, it's conservation. And, 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 and I can see that we have, through, through the Conservation Commission and the Conservation Commission's peer reviewer, um, no, they agree with the memorandum that um, the, the, this gentleman um, you know, pointed out that was prepared by Niche, that was prepared by me, and that that you know, pond was you know, man-made, it was constructed after 1996, and is not applicable to the wetland bylaws. Where, right. uh, where, from where does that come? Is that from the state? So again, the, I don't want to go too far. That's okay, going to have to take out the I'm conservation. Gonna, you to get, have answered your question, though. To you get, did review that. So thank, just, you, thank you for but your But just so you understand, it's just, Conservation made that decision, so you got to deal with them deal to get them. better explanation. I can't give it to you. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Uh, I talked about the drought. Oh. No, I think I, I, so you don't have any. Jurisdiction over these um, build and no build lines or anything like that. Where, where do they? Do you know where they come from? Well, it depends on plans? what type of line you're talking about. But if you're uh, talking about the ones that, with the there's lines that state uh, like hundred foot buffer zone, and there's <laughs> lines that say fifty foot <laughs> right. no build zone. It, those are all conservation. Uh, those are conservation yep. commissions. Yes. Thank you very much, Ellie. Uh, because the only thing I gotta say is that these lines are kind of as it's progressing this project. They started out in one spot and they're drifting further over as we're going so that they no longer apply. So I guess I'll have to bring that up before the Conservation Commission. So that will be, it's all I got. All right. And I thank you for your patience. No thank problem, you, Mr. Thank you. May I ask this gentleman one question? I wanted to ask you this question when you started. Okay. Because obviously a lot of this is things you've observed. Yeah. Where is your house on the plan? If you were showing the plan where your house is. Right here. So it's kind of like, there's a, the road comes down like this and then curves, yep. and then recurves again. So this is, will be my garage right here. So that's where it points directly to this loading dock right here. All right, very good, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Anyone else with any other questions, comments, or concerns? Mr. Chairman, Keith Robichaud, Pleasant Street. I'm in a butter of the property. Um, to fulfill your request from earlier, as far as people blocking or backing up the traffic back onto Pleasant Street, all it takes is two parents wanting to talk to each other for more than a minute, and you'll have a traffic jam backing itself out onto Pleasant Street again. 
You could also have somebody get into an accident or something of that nature. So do, do, do you have, did you have a suggestion as how to eliminate the possibility of anyone talking or having an accident? Well, you said there are going to be monitors out there. Okay. Now, I'm assuming those are the school teachers. Mm -hmm. I'm making that assumption. Rarely have I seen the police monitoring that traffic flow. They're not, excuse me, they're not going to be on Pleasant Street. You're the second person to say that. Not today. The, the monitors are in the parking lot of the school, the driveway of the school, not out on Pleasant Street. That would be my assumption, too, because they don't want to walk all the way around this large, long loop now. All right. No, I'm sorry, you both are just talking about two different things. M Mr. Fowler's talking about the monitors, not parents. You're talking about whether parents might be out there. I'm talking about what the parents have the potential of doing trying to drop off their students or pick them up, as, as you pointed out. It just Because you were asking about it. Is, so other questions that I have within this, is there fencing around the boundary of the property that's going to be built to try to mitigate trash and other things from migrating? Go ahead. Yes. Oh, uh, certainly on the uh, north. Can you show it on the plan? Oh, sure. Okay, I'm sorry, can we put the other one back up? Because I think the other one's larger. Uh, yes, we do. We're zoomed down. Certainly can. Certainly can. Uh, along these two perimeters, the north and the east, there will be uh, fencing. It will be wood stockade fencing for most of the run to about here. This section will be steel picket, so it will be open. You can see through it both for you know access and, and, and sight lines, and then wood stockade along here as well. Um, at the moment, that's the extent of the site fencing. So, um, do you have any other questions about about that? The other thing I'll just add to that is it's not only a row of fencing, you know, that was kind of put up there. It's also a, a landscaped tree line. That's so there's trees all planted along uh, those, that fence line as well. Trees or shrubbery? Trees, the trees. Um, the other question I had was around the bus drop off versus the entrance and exit from the cluster of schools that are here? You said you've done a traffic study. Today, the buses go in a different entrance than the rest of the school parking goes in. In tomorrow's view of the world, if I'm reading this correctly, you're gonna have four entrances and exits, an entrance and exit for the buses, and an entrance and exit for the rest of the vehicular traffic, i.e. teachers and parents, et cetera? Yeah, why not? But by entrances and exits, uh, there will be two curb cuts as there are existing. Um, one's in the same location, one has shifted a little bit. All the traffic will go through those two entrances, save for some emergency vehicles, which can access from the north side on Monroe. So the buses and the students slash teachers will be sharing the same exits and entrance? Uh, that is correct. As they do at all schools. I beg your pardon? As they do at all schools. Any consideration on the snow and snow removal when you've got all these people walking in and out of this hole? I ask that because we tend to use an awful lot of area to store our snow when we plow it off of roadways and parking lots. And the snow banks get pretty big and then we move front end loaders in to try to push those snow banks even farther back. And you pointed out that there's going to be curbing, uh, which I've seen 
the front end loaders take the curbing and just peel it up like it was a banana peel, and it ends up in some field somewhere or off to the side of the parking lot. So, just a quick response to that. We have met with DPW uh, probably twice now, uh, and we will probably meet again, and we did talk about snow storage, and we did develop a snow plan, and, and some of their comments uh, have been incorporated into uh, this current plan. They wanted us, we actually removed some islands to make it easier for them to plow, and so we, we have talked to DPW about that. The poor plow operators at night trying to clean the places out, can't yeah. see the stuff, and they don't know the parking lot. Yeah. So I hope that there'll be some plan in place as we go forward. If there's additional snow, that there'll be some removal from the site as well? Yeah. That's uh, usually your occurrence, right? Right. Uh, we, we removed uh, uh, many islands throughout the site. And then, you know, of course, that area that uh, by the, the practice field, you know, wouldn't be used during the winter. So that could all be used for snow storage. Okay. And that's part of our operation and maintenance uh, you know, for the site that we will be submitting to the uh, Conservation Commission as far as um, you know, snow storage, where they can store it. Um, they have to stay so far away from wetland lines and things of that nature per DEP requirements. So. Sure. And, and then as they had said that, you know, if there were areas you know, that they needed to remove snow off site, they would do it. Is there going to be a gate plan for that practice field in the parking area for that? I'm sorry, can you step back up to the no, mic? No, apologies. Is there going to be a gate, much like they have to the uh, baseball field at the high school, is there going to be a gate that is open and closed on a daily basis? To which to field? To the practice just, field. This, the, this, the lower field. This, yeah, okay. this area down here on the far right. No. Is it, no. no. No, there is uh, not. That planned on being open and accessible 24 hours a day. Um, well, I mean, when you say 24 hours a day, if there's no gate, you could drive in there. My, my guess is that you're not supposed to be on the property outside of the school hours, at which point it becomes a Tewksbury police issue. I agree, but if there's a gate there, then it kind of mitigates that potential. And they have one at the high school for the probably the same reasons that we get into if if that was the case. I mean, I mean, I guess we could discuss whether or not you know a, a gate could go in, um, but obviously, like I said, there's not one currently planned. I would assume that a practice field is not being used in the middle of the winter. But that's my assumption. So there would be no no need to plow it, sand it, salt it drive traffic down there, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I'm just asking the question. Uh, last one is, I'm assuming this is a vernal pool. Is there any mitigation so that that stays in somewhat a pristine environment and the salt mitigation, et cetera, is going on around there? Correct. That, that is being handled through the Conservation Commission, but we, we are uh, protecting, we've got a protective 25-foot buffer zone around it. We will have erosion control devices in place during construction activities for the contractor to um, you know, stay away from that area um, during construction activities. And then just to restore um, those areas near the, um, near the vernal pool and near that 25 foot no disturb line that's, that will be in place. Is, uh, thank you. Is there also fencing around it like there is today in the, the pond that's behind the Ryan School plant? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else with any questions, comments, or concerns? Let me just make sure no one else has any other questions, comments, or concerns. Going once, twice. All right, you get one. And not in like five pots. One. Thank you very much. The, uh, you just state your name again because oh, it's going to get picked uh, up on the. Great, great man, six one one Sarpo Bonavaro. Thank you. Um, regarding the water service that they're going to be using, they're talking about how we're going to increase water pressure and it's going to be great for the Monroe Circle. Well, the last time that they put, they 
tied into our water service they did for the football field and for the concession stand. And since then, we've had three blowouts on the line going down, slowly going down our street. It's, uh, it's over 50 years old, so you put more pressure on it, we're gonna get more blowing out going down. So it's not something we're all we're just gonna tie into it and everything will be fine. I'm sure that we're gonna have problems with that line going all the way down until we finally get to the very end of the street, in which case then we've re replaced all the, the lines. So thank you. Right. Thank you. Do you have, I don't know if that's something that's come up. No. All right, so that's something for you guys, maybe just to discuss with the town engineer and DPW, mm -hmm. just to make sure, you know, we're not causing a problem to the left to deal with it going to the right. right. Okay? Anyone else? I'll give you one more shot. All right, seeing none. Bring it back to the board. Does the board have any other questions or comments at this time? I have one question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, the stockade fence that you guys are putting up on the north end and on, on the side there, it's not wooden, is it? It is. It, it is. is? Yeah. How about maintenance of it going forward year to year and staining it or whatever? Or are you going to let it just weather? And why not a white plastic fence that's going to be more attractive than a stockade possibly? But just a consideration. You don't have to answer that now. But just, uh, you know, I, I've envisioned the fence not being maintained by the, by the town and it not being uh, and it going, uh, you know, rotting after so, so many years for the residents. Okay. I think too that that goes again to the comment I made earlier about the renderings. Just so you know, it's easy to get a little bit of an idea of how things look when you bring bring those in and we can throw them up. So, you know, maybe to, to Ms. Vitalia's point, whether you can give us a kind of a side by side. You know, maybe one looks better than the other. I mean, if it is a maintenance issue, then obviously that's something that the schools needs to be aware of and that they've prepared to take on the maintenance of. Um, maybe they've already discussed that. I don't know, but something worth just checking into them. Uh, anyone else, Mr. Fowler? I have one question, and no one's going to like it. Okay. Most of the conversation, a lot of the conversation this evening has been on traffic was a parking and speed traffic around the um, traversing around the. Uh, outer perimeter of the site. How are you going to control the speed there? Well, we, we do have uh, speed tables throughout the loop. Speed what? Speed, speed tables. tables like we're, 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 speed berms? Yeah. Oh, yes. OK. You didn't say that. Yes. We, you did? We, yes, we mentioned yeah. it earlier. There's three of them. That, right? that I must have closed my ears. There, there, there are a number of um, speed, we, speed raised uh, crosswalks. Okay. Um, oh, I know that on the crosswalk, yes. Just so we're on the same page. When you're talking about, uh, what are you calling it, by the way? A, a, a raised crosswalk or a, a, that, a raised. That's a, a speed what? Speed table, a raised speed table. I've heard of speed burn, but never that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'm learning something. <laughs> when you say that, they're about. Uh, you know, an elevation such as that, and it goes for about eight feet, and then it goes down on the other side. Co correct. So that you can have a crosswalk go across it. Those are fine. Yep. And, and it, it does more, it does the same thing as a speed bump. But the reason you don't want to have a speed, and I'll accentuate, bump, is because the school buses. Right. You just don't, someone's going to get hurt on a school bus. So with, with those, I'm in favor of it. So thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? All set. All right. So obviously, you know, we have more to discuss and uh, more things to submit. And there were a few questions tonight that we'll ask you to have answers for or, uh, you know, or more explanation to um, from this evening. But other than that, um, what is the pleasure of the board? Uh, let's Second motion to continue, Mr. Chairman. All right. So just, just before just we do it, time. Are, you, are you looking to come back? At our next meeting, I mean, when when are you are you prepared to come back for the next meeting? Well, I think we'll be prepared to come back at the next meeting. Sure. I don't see why not. Okay, yeah. so then next meeting is the second. The next meeting is the second, correct? You'll have three members. Yes. 
So, I mean, the next, I think, I'm not, I can't be absolutely sure, but I believe both the 2nd and the 16th are likely to have three members present. So while we can take information and you could present, no decision can be made by the board with less than four members present. So, you know, I, I encourage you to come in with the information sure. um, because it just, you know, it fills the file and that's, that's fine. We can still have the hearings. But as far as making a decision, um, my, I anticipate that the soonest you're going to be able to get a decision from the board would be after the turn of the year. All right? Um, I mean, unless scheduling changes, in which case we'll have someone reach out to you and let you know. Uh, but we'd probably be able to let you know that on the second anyways. We'd probably have a better idea by then. But more than likely, we're looking at three members for the two December meetings. All right? And, and the same three members? Um, I don't know that it's the same, but it, as long as a member doesn't miss, uh, you know, too many of the meetings and has checked the record of the things discussed, they can sit and, you know, meet in that meeting. But either way, since you can't get a vote, it wouldn't make that much of a difference which members were in attendance for either of those meetings. Information-wise, each of us would have to get caught up if we missed anyways. Right. I don't know that. I know in some instances, if you miss a meeting, as I'm on a planning board, you know, uh, planning board member as well, um, if you miss a meeting, then you can't vote Correct. At, at subsequent meetings. So yes. that's my, that was my question for three. It's, not, no, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a certain number of meetings. It's not a meeting. Uh, okay, so with that then, um, we have a motion to continue this to 7 p.m. on December 2nd. Have a motion? Motion to continue to December 2nd. All right. A motion made. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, I'll give the moment, the room a moment to clear, and then we'll move on to the next item. Moving on to agenda item D, 137 North Street, 150, uh, 1547 Andover Street at all. Uh, the applicant has requested to have this continued to our December 16th meeting. So do we have a motion to continue this to 705 on December 16th? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a, a statement here or an opinion that, that we remove this completely from our agenda. It's taking up our agenda from week to week to week, or meeting to meeting to meeting, until they are ready and approach us as far as putting it back on the agenda. I mean, they've been here and the continuing for- can't, we, we can't, can't do that. It has to be- It has to be continued to a, yeah, to a date. Okay. It just right. seems like this taking up our agenda and we just uh, keep continuing. Is there a time period in this too? Well, I mean, it's not that there's a time period. I mean, at some point, the board could decide to simply not grant the request to continue it. Um, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't recommend we do that tonight. Obviously, with no warning to the petitioner. But okay. if we're at a point where we where we're going to threaten to um, deny the permit for lack of moving forward or any new information, then we would give them some heads up that that's going to happen and let them have a chance to come in and tell us Okay, well, if you put it on, on to the next meeting, you can't vote on it anyway because there's only three members going to be present. They requested to the 16th. Anyways. 16th? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, and that's the, it. You know the reason is, why they keep delaying it? Yeah, the issue is they're still working with the fire department. When they made their modifications to the, the landscape area in the middle, it screwed up their turning radiuses. So they're still trying to work with the fire department to get that straight. Okay, out. okay, that's fine. Okay, so... I, I wonder, though, it, to, so just one, one more comment on that, though. They, uh, we were the ones who asked them to make that island bigger, mm -hmm. and that sort of obviously caused a problem. At some point, though, maybe we need to have them come back in and discuss with us where we feel 
you know, may we be willing to go back on that in order to accommodate the fire trucks? I don't know, but I mean, if they're just going to keep banging heads about it, at some point we should probably discuss it. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, motion made to continue this to the 16th at 7:05. Yes, sir. Just for your um, edification, uh, as I told the office, there is a chance I could be here. Let me ask you this. I'll back up. Would you have a meeting with three for this? Anyways, the, you mean the school? Yeah. No. For this matter? Yes, the school. For the school? Yes. Uh, I, I would, we'd, we'd accept information if they had anything to present. No, 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 no. We're talking about North Street. Oh, okay. I, that's why I just wasn't sure. So um, if they came in with something, we'd hear it, but obviously we wouldn't be able to make any decision on it. Okay. Um, unless we did have the four members on the 16th. As I told the, uh, the office, uh, there's a possibility that I would be able to be here, and that's my plan. I have a personal issue with my family member that will maybe will make me not be able to be here because uh, I'll be far away. Uh, and I'll, I said I would be able to call on Thursday the 13th to tell them that. Okay. Uh, the 12th. So. They wanted to, uh, that way they could let you know and let the, the uh, petitioner know. Okay. So we'll ask that the, uh, the uh, town planner just give them that information of the sort of influxness of that 16th meeting. And we'll, we'll discuss this again on the second when we come back as to giving uh, um, a heads up to whoever's coming in then mm -hmm. where we look like we might stand on the 16th. All right. So I have a motion for the continuance of... This matter to 705 on December 16th, May. Do I have a second? Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. And that brings us to agenda item E, which is Burt Road Development, uh, continued from our 11 4 meeting. All right, gentlemen, if you state your names for the record, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening, Peter Ellison with TEC. I'm the civil engineer with the pro uh, for the project. Scott Kelly, RJ Kelly with the property owner. Uh, I guess I'll give a brief summary um, of what's progressed since our last meeting. We were last in front of you. Uh, November 4th, two weeks ago. Um, I believe coming out of that meeting, um, Scott and I had a pretty good sense for where the board, the board stood on the project. Um, there were some loose ends to tie up with uh, Kevin Hardiman's um, review letter, as well as the stormwater peer review that we received um, from the town of Andover's planning board. Um, since that meeting, we have submitted uh, a response package to the Town of Andover Planning Board in regards to that stormwater um, review. And we've also submitted a letter to um, Anna McGinty on, uh, to address the comments from Kevin Hardiman. Um, that being said, um, I guess I'll, I'll run through the changes to the plan as they relate to the Town of Tewksbury and then I will um, send it back for any comments from you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and this should be quick because the changes in the town of Tewksbury are very minor. Um, the only change on the plan is that the warehouse one grew in size by about 10,000 square feet from 185,000 to 195,150. Um, the placement and orientation of the building is, is mostly the same and the site features um, within Tewksbury are the same. It just so happens that the way that this site is accessed and it lays out, uh, I would guess you know, 95% of the stormwater management system and the site features are within the town of Andover. So the review in front of the town of Andover's planning board is, is um, I would guess, more in depth. I think that summarizes the changes really. Um, we're 
showing you this information tonight um, just to show you that we're moving in the right direction. We don't disagree with any of the comments in front of us. We're trying to address them as best we can. Um, so with that, I'll leave it to you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Fowler. Well, I wish we had had all this information uh, from you, from Mr. Adam. Because um, I didn't see it till this evening. It was just submitted to the office today. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So right. uh, Mr. Hartman didn't have a chance to respond. Right. So not a whole heck of a lot I can uh, do. Where is it? The questions might be answered by him or by you. When we have give his response to you. Have you read his letter? Yes, of course. Yeah. The, um all four of his comments are directly replied to in this response letter. Okay. So I've read and responded to every one of his comments, yes. All right. Um, and uh, I guess to um, answer, I guess, respond to your comment, uh, this is entirely not, nothing to do with Kevin Hardiman. It was submitted today, so he would never have possibly been able to get back to you in time. All right. Are you satisfied that he'll be satisfied? Yeah, I'm fairly confident that... Um, his comments are set hard. So That's very good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vitalia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also want to echo my uh, um, comments about receiving this information tonight. Doesn't give us a fair chance to review it, make an opinion upon it. Not that that's a big issue for Tewksbury, because it's kind of not, considering most of the issues are with the Andover Planning Board and so forth and so on. But still, we need this information on a timely manner, we get our information on Friday afternoons late. We have the weekend to work on it. And then to get it tonight doesn't give us a fair chance to review it. Educated questions to you and so forth and so on. So with that, I, I mean, I, had, I happen to look through it pretty, pretty, you know, quickly. So I don't have any comments. It looks like it's in, in order. So uh, with that, I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Delaney. Yeah. You know, I, again, yeah, we're looking over the stuff, but I got a, a thing here that says uh, we have not received a revised submittal package addressing our comments on October 4th review letter. So that, I think, was issued to us, and then this came in today. That's why. So okay. the information didn't come in until today, but this was done prior to. This was already in our package. We only just got this thing in today. Yep. I understand. And I've been... You know, I got here early, I'm trying to read it and so forth, but I I'm, I guess I'm kind of like with Mr. Fatalia. Uh, you know, the town of Andover is covering 99% of this thing. So if they don't have a problem with what's going on, I don't. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess I'll agree. It's hard for us to, to make sort of final determinations on anything that comes in um, so last minute without being sure that you know, the, the, in this case, Mr. Hardiman's you know, probably squared away for, you know, the answers that he got. And if he doesn't have anything additional from your answers, I mean, it's unlikely probably, but, um, you know, the, the, the turnaround is just too quick to try and be certain of that. Um, there is the sort of uniqueness of this that we're, we're splitting this between us and, you know, a town that shall not be named. Um, <laughs> So that, that, you know, that makes it, it's not all us. So there is sort of some other moving parts that, that, uh, that, that come into this. Um, so that, that's sort of where I come down on it. Um, I see no one in the audience. Uh, so I predict that we'll have no public comment at this time. So I'll bring it back to the board. Um, what is the pleasure of the board at this time? I would think, Mr. Chairman, Chairman that uh, Read as much as I like the answers from the table. Um, I think two weeks, uh, the second of uh, December. I don't know. I can't. Sixteenth. Sixteenth. We have to put it to the sixteenth, and then just see where we are. Yeah. Uh, anyways, we have to wait for Mr. Hadman's answer in his own words. So that's where I stand. So 
reels. Yeah, same, same approach. I mean, I'm sorry they has to wait till that period of time, but you know, it's just unfortunate we got it late. He didn't make a comment on it, so I, I like to make a motion that we continue the hearing until December 16th, get all our paperwork and all our eggs in order, and then um, make a final decision for you probably on the 16th. Okay, so on the 16th, this would be, and we also okay. on the uh, 13th, what if I'm not going to be here. We'll let them know. To notify you so that you don't come here and sit for nothing. All right. Okay. So we are we have a motion to continue this till 710 on 1216. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Uh, motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. All right, gentlemen. Check back in on the 13th just to get an idea, all right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, moving on to agenda, uh, I'm sorry, to old business. Is there any old business anyone wishes to discuss? Hearing none, uh, any new business anyone wishes to discuss? Mr. Chairman, I had a, I had a comment from somebody regarding the uh, landscaping down at Walgreens okay. in South Tewksbury saying that a lot of the shrubs and so forth had died. Um, so maybe we uh, need to get a look at that again. I, I haven't had a chance to get out and take a look at it. I just found out tonight about that, but uh, maybe we could review that. They were, they were in front of us before. Okay. Regarding a lighting issue and some landscaping, I believe, but okay. I think some and we, 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 It's definitely the pot that's Walmart? Is that? I believe so. Oh, um, Walgreens, I'm Walgreens, sorry. Walgreens, I'm sorry. Walgreens, yeah. Did I say Walmart? No. Okay. I, I think so, I just heard started. Walmart in my head. <laughs> it's just bad because I drive by Walgreens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, maybe we'll take we a look at that. Yeah, that's all. I'll have to look again. I mean, their original, what they put in, I thought was was good. I'm not sure what the, um, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a pretty much a wall of of uh, know, tree slash shrub. Um, so I'll have, I'm going to have to think about that when I go home tonight and I drive by and see what may have happened. Maybe some of it didn't take or. Yeah. What to, I'll, didn't I'll make it, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Could be. Uh, any other new business? Yes. Oh. Mr. Powell. Thank you. <clears throat> Quite a few years ago, uh, this planning board met at 6.30. And it went to 7 uh, because one member at that time, and I can't remember why, couldn't make it to the meeting at 6.30. So obviously we're not working as at a meeting with four members and then um, you have him walk in or hear her walk in. I'd like to find out if you could poll A, administration, B, the board, to find out if a 6.30 start would be difficult for anybody to handle. That way we can get more done before the uh, wee hours of the evening as uh, used to be. I mean, most of our meetings before were 10.30, 11 o'clock. And uh, we've been fortunate in the past uh, six or seven years that we haven't had to do that very often, a couple of times. But just the thought. And we can ask the question. Okay. Uh, any other new business? I'm here at six o'clock every week anyway. <laughs> um, correspondence. We have some correspondence in the, uh, in the package. One here from 1418 Main yep. Street, right? Uh, da, da, da. right? All right, so this is, I mean, at this point, this is still informational in terms of they've reached out, we'll see where that goes. And the other one is regarding the bond release for 20 Carter Street, let's see. And they have they haven't come in all right, at all. Yeah, right? So that's not surprising. Um, so, well, let me just continue to sit on that for now. Town Planners Report. Uh, we have a memo in here on 1992 Main Street. And the... Striping. They've been painted. Excellent. When did she do... Really? When? It's got to be the gas station that I asked about. Um, the one on the corner of Shawsheen and uh, Main. Uh, we had the one ways mm -hmm. um, denoted on there for people not to come out and try to cross over 38 to take the left to head towards like South Tewksbury. Mm -hmm. When they come out of that driveway, um, that is not what's happening. People are doing it constantly. 
and it may or may not have something to do with the fact that you can't see the arrow on the ground anymore. You know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, the same, but, but it's interesting you say that because the same thing is happening because, and, and it, was, it was reported to a previous administration about the gas station at the corner of Pike and Main Street. They're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And there's supposed to be a sign there, no left turn. And there never has been one place that would stop a lot of people cutting across all four, uh, four so, lanes. Yeah. Mr. Fowler, so coming out of the station, you cannot go left towards, Close, towards Walmart? The, the driveway closest to Pike Street is supposed to be one way in mm -hmm. and out. The other one's coming out. Yes. The one on the other side, sure. Yeah. I agree. I'd have to look again because I thought I looked the other day and I didn't realize that the paintings had been done on that property. But uh, hopefully they are. And then we'll hopefully alleviate some of that because that is dangerous and not useful. So, all right. Anything else? One more comment, Mr. Chairman, if I could. I want to take the opportunity here to uh, commend Mr. Bob Fowler for all his work on the Zoning Bylaw Committee. We've attended a couple of those meetings, Mr. Chairman, you and I and Mr. Delaney, and, uh, and the work those guys are doing are just, it's just phenomenal. Uh, I said it at the meeting that, I don't know, I wouldn't have the time to put into that, but those, these guys have done a great job getting, getting us to where we are now with the new, the new uh, uh, bylaws that are coming out, hopefully in the next, next couple of months, but uh, I just wanted to take the opportunity to commend you, Mr. Fowler, for all your efforts. Well, I thank you, but it's, it's, a, committee, it's a committee job. I know that. Person job. But Thank a lot you, of time and effort. I That's just it. hope the uh, enthusiasm carries over to town meeting. Sure. <laughs> Agreed. M motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion made. Do I have a second? Okay. Motion made. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 